I decided to deconstruct salt by completely dissolving it in a liquid which could be dipped or brushed or sprayed on a bit of copper. Then I dissolved two teaspoons of salt in one cup of water, ammonia, vinegar, and soy sauce. As you can see, there's a marked difference in color and textures between the four salt solutions. I repeated the experiment three more times with cook times of two hours, three hours, and four hours. Some I allowed to develop natural poolage and some I got painterly with. It would appear the longer the cook times, the more similar in color and texture water and ammonia become, whereas vinegar and soy sauce remain quite unique. I really wanted to find a patina recipe which would introduce some yellow. Encouraged by my success with vinegar and soy sauce, I decided to give yellow ochre a try. What's yellow ochre and why give it a try? Good questions. I first came across yellow ochre in an art history class. I knew yellow ochre was a natural paint pigment of some kind. In fact, one of the earliest paint pigments discovered by people. Think cave paintings. I thought maybe the minerals in the pigment might react with the ammonia and offer up a yellow patina. So I mixed three teaspoons of yellow ochre natural earth pigment with one cup of water, sprayed, sprinkled some salt. I intended to cook the yellow ochre for two hours, but noticed as the patina cooked, the yellow was disappearing. Since I was looking for yellow, I stopped at one hour, then let completely dry. And the result, hello yellow, and just look at the textures. Although the patina is actually very smooth with a glossy feel, I also cooked up a sample with no salt. Curious, no real difference in color or texture. Although the salty yellow ochre patina sample does have bits of speckled dark spots that were likely caused by the salt. After a bit of handling, I noticed some cracks and little bits of patina flaking off. Just how stable was this patina? And was it in fact even a patina? So I decided to give it a wash test. What's a wash test? A wash test is used to determine how stable a patina is and if the patina is actually just a residue. And as for stable, well, let's see. I soaked both patinas in warm water for about 15 minutes, then rubbed my fingers over the patina, slowly increasing the pressure as I went. Conclusion? Not a residue, but an unstable patina. Well, not exactly failed. I have to say, I do like a bit of broken off patina. So really, it comes down to personal taste. It's interesting to note the difference in color between the two wash patinas in regards to the newly exposed copper. And the salty yellow ochre patina sample remained more yellow. I spent some time thinking about this patina and how I could change the recipe and stabilize it. But as I was pondering the nature of stability and how to achieve it, my mind wandered back to the unsalted yellow ochre patina sample. I began to have this nagging question, where did the blue come from? My experience and understanding of achieving this kind of blue with an ammonia patina was that salt was required. There could be some salt or sodium in yellow ochre. It is a mineral after all, but what if that wasn't true? What if water all by itself could create blue? So I sprayed some straight up all by itself water onto a bit of copper and let cook for two hours. Well, it didn't take long. There you have it. Blue. There are moments in time when the whole world shifts. This was one for me. How could this be? Blue without salt. A mystery. Actually, it does make sense since water does have salt in it. Mind you, only trace amounts. Although... Obviously enough.
I have a confession to make. I didn't actually add any salt to the soy sauce. Soy sauce is pretty salty all on its own, but I did mix it with water. Why? Don't ask me why. I'm not really sure why. Sometimes I'm like that. Sometimes thoughts just pop into my head. I usually follow them. They lead me to the most interesting places. Anyway, I mixed one-third cup of soy sauce with two-third cups of water. Now I'm wondering what that water did to the soy sauce patina. So I sprayed some pure uncut soy sauce and let cook for two hours. And the result? Ew! Yes. Not nearly as lovely as the watered-down soy sauce patina sample. And now I'm wondering about straight-up ammonia and vinegar. So I cooked up some samples. That's a lot of patina poolage. Yes, I wanted to see what pure liquids uninterrupted looked like. So no getting painterly. And no added salt. And no diluting. The question at this point was, how stable were the liquid-only patinas? And were they in fact patinas? was simply a bit of liquid which dried on a bit of copper. I knew what I had to do. The water test. Patina or residue? I'd say patina. Let's have a closer look. I expected this patina to be quite fragile and wash away, but it's actually quite sturdy. There was only a bit of blue lost to the wash. As with water, very little loss of blue with ammonia. Vinegar? Unfortunately, the lovely light blue fringe washed away. And soy sauce? Much improved, but almost no blue. But how nice to see some rich browns. I decided to play and see what getting painterly with straight up soy sauce would offer up. Not what I expected, but interesting. I was going to see what getting painterly with straight up vinegar would offer up but then remembered. I hoped longer cook times would stabilize the patina, so I cooked up some more samples. Nope. 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 Wait a minute. Can you go back? Nope. Nope. That's the one. Why is it so shiny? Good eye. I hoped to sneak that one past you. Sometimes I'm not as patient as I should be. After washing, I was itching to see if I could stabilize what was left of the patina with a bit of spray lacquer, and in my haste forgot to get a photo before lacquering. Stabilize with lacquer? Yes. We'll talk in detail about spray lacquer and other sealants in Part 2i, Preparations and Sealing and Dealing. I was going to break the budget and run out of copper if I continued on like this, so I jumped ahead to cook times of 72 hours. The yellow's been lost, but in its place is something quite interesting. I was curious to know if they were stable. I was also curious to know if the patinas were not stable. Could I fix them in place with lacquer? And most of all, I was curious to know what was underneath. I decided to see what was underneath and gave them a wash. What it lost in yellow, it gained in stability. And what a difference a little salt makes. One day, when I was downstairs doing some laundry, I noticed an old box of miracle Grow, water-soluble plant food, on one of the shelves. I checked the ingredients. No bleach. I didn't expect to find any, but better safe than sorry. And I thought... Why not? So I cooked up a sample and gave it a wash. Wow, lovely. I think this is my favorite solution. Actually, I had several favorite solutions. Now I'm wondering what other solutions are yet to be found 